So Bernie Sanders dominated the West Virginia primary yesterday, and I wanted to take a look at some Democratic exit poll results to see what we can learn from them moving forward and what this teaches us for the general election. So ABC News reports here, six in 10 voters said they were very worried about the direction of the nation's economy in the next few years, by far the highest level of economy worry in a Democratic primary this year, far above the average, which is 40%. All right, so that's very telling right there. Bernie Sanders wins, and he wins in a state where people are super worried about the economy. Six in ten said that versus the average in Democratic primaries is 40%. So they continue here. A majority in the state thought trade with other countries takes away more U.S. jobs than it creates. By the way, that's a verifiable fact. Versus only a little more than a third who said it creates more jobs. These economically aggrieved voters not only were far more numerous in West Virginia than in other Democratic primaries, they also were much more supportive of Bernie Sanders here than elsewhere. So again, you're beginning to see this uh, picture get painted in front of you where when, people, when the shit really hits the fan, people go, yeah, no f fucking around. Where's Bernie Sanders? That's my guy because I know he's actually going to look out for me. All right, let's continue. Independence accounted for a third of voters in West Virginia in preliminary exit poll results. So it was an open primary. Well above the average to date, 22%. Sanders took 6 in 10 of these voters. See, now this is again a really, really important point because what it shows you is, and this has been the case all along from the very first primary we had, if you had a system that allowed, that was an open primary system, so independents are allowed to vote, in some states you're allowed to have, get crossover votes from the other party too. When you allow that, guess who does better unfailingly? Bernie Sanders. And I don't know if you guys know this, but in the general election, that's kind of how it works. Independents are allowed to vote, and you could be a member of whatever party you want to be, and you could do a crossover vote. When you allow that, Bernie Sanders does better. It's only when you really, really control it and, and honestly rig it and make it rigid, where only Democrats can vote for Democrats and independents can't vote, and no crossover votes, and you gotta do registration a month before. Only when you do stuff like that does Hillary have a gigantic advantage. Yet again, that is quite telling. All right, let me give you more. Roughly 6 in 10 voters in preliminary exit poll results say honesty or empathy are most important to their vote. Not experience or electability. So, yet again, who wins on the front of honesty and empathy? Bernie Sanders by a landslide. Uh, Hillary's fallback arguments of, yeah, but experience and electability, people go, mm, not nearly as important. And then here's my favorite, favorite fact. Some people could uh, hear this next fact and go, well, I don't like that fact, but I actually do like it, and I'll explain why. Here it is. West Virginia Democratic voters were among the least liberal so far this year. Fewer than half said they were liberals versus an average of 62% in previous Democratic contests. So when you ask the Democratic voters in West Virginia, are you liberal? They don't like the word liberal. They're like, no, I wouldn't call myself a liberal. No. But those people overwhelmingly voted for Bernie Sanders. Now, why do I like that fact? You can make the case, well, hey, they're ignorant, yada, yada. And there's an element of truth to that in the sense that they, they don't know their political science terminology, but many people don't. But what I take away from that is people just listen to what he says, and they're not categorizing it in, oh, that's liberal, oh, that's progressive, oh, that's moderate, oh, that's right wing. They just go, they hear it and they go, I like it. I don't care what the fuck you label it. I'm not going to label it. I hear what he says. I know he's looking out for me. I know he's on my side. I like it. I like it. I like it. So you've now s set up this situation where Bernie Sanders not only gets, as should be relatively obvious, the Democratic base that is more liberal and more progressive, and they say that, uh, now you have in many states people who say, okay, forget the labels. I just know that that guy's looking out for me. And I'm going to vote for that guy. I don't call myself a liberal, but I'm going to vote for that guy. So that means Bernie Sanders gets the base, and he gets the people who are moderates. So obviously we need Hillary Clinton in the general. No, see, that makes no sense. <laughs> Hillary Clinton loses independence to Bernie Sanders. 
across the board, and now she's losing people who are less liberal. Which, again, if, you, if you're just rigid about the definitions, you would think, well, she's more conservative than he is. That's unquestionable. So therefore, she should get those voters. No, they don't like her. They don't fucking like her. They don't like her. So everybody who smugly thinks like Hillary would destroy Donald Trump in a general. <laughs> Wait until you get a load of this fact. 44% of Bernie voters said they would vote for Trump in the general election if need be. 44%, nearly half, nearly half of Bernie Sanders voters in the West Virginia primary said, I'll vote for Trump over Hillary. Iceberg dead ahead. I'm telling you guys, this is real. I went back and forth on this at one point. Where first I said, because some people in the Bernie or Bust movement, they were described as they're either going to write in Bernie, they're going to vote for Jill Stein, or some of them will actually vote for Trump over Hillary. When I first read that, I was like, mm, I don't know about that. Uh, I think I don't think they'll go for Trump. I think they'll either write in Bernie or vote for Jill Stein, or maybe just sit out the election or whatever it is. Now I get the sense, not only from these numbers, but from other numbers, and honestly from anecdotal evidence of people tweeting at me, and people saying in the comment section, for example, on my YouTube videos, like, no, I'm not kidding. <laughs> like, I'm a Bernie Sanders voter. I'm, I'm a diehard Bernie Sanders supporter. I love Bernie Sanders more than anybody. But if he loses, I will vote for Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton. So you don't think this phenomenon is real? Oh, you got another thing coming to you. There are definitely voters who would go to Donald Trump if Bernie Sanders is not the one who's running in the general. So, again, for all the smug, condescending people in the Democratic establishment who are so utterly convinced that Hillary Clinton can't be defeated, it's our, I mean, it's a tap-in, it's a gimme, there's nothing going on here, she'll destroy Trump. Jeez, you have another thing coming. You have no clue. You have no clue. It's a coin flip election. That's what it is. Is it possible she beats him? Sure. But is it also totally possible that he wins? Absolutely. He gets independents to vote for him He over Hillary Clinton, even though Bernie gets it over him. Uh, he gets crossover uh, voters to vote for him. And in an, a general election with Hillary Clinton as the Democratic nominee, you know what's going to happen? Turnout's going to be low. You know who wins when turnout is low? Republicans. So, you want to roll the dice? Hillary's your candidate. You don't? You want a country that's actually going to become a social democracy and have FDR 2.0 and a new New Deal and uh, a better situation for middle class Americans where they get health care, they get college, we allocate our tax money better. Well, then you vote for Bernie Sanders. So in other words, if you really, really care about the issues and a better future, then you vote for Bernie.